Hi, I'm Wynn Harmon, and I've slipped out of my mask for just a second to welcome you to Village Preservation's 2020 House Tour. It is our great hope that you enjoy this tour from the comfort and safety of wherever you're watching. Up and down these neighborhoods, behind every corner, through every window and door, there are amazing secrets and stories waiting for us to explore. And now with the magical help of our cameraman, please join us on an architectural treasure hunt through the village. Our neighborhoods are synonymous with creativity, history, charm, innovation, openness, and artistry. Greenwich Village, the East Village, and NoHo have been incubators for some of the greatest artistic, social, architectural, and cultural movements of the last two centuries. The Beats and 60s counterculture movements found a home here. The Stonewall Inn, among so many other sites in our neighborhoods, was crucial in supporting and giving fuel to the LGBTQ civil rights movement. Jane Jacobs changed the way the world thought about cities, old buildings, and the importance of community based upon the lessons she saw outside her door in Greenwich Village. Rock and roll, folk, and punk musicians, painters, sculptors, writers, actors, directors, and artists of every variety have called this their home. Village Preservation led the successful campaign in 2015 to designate the Stonewall Inn as a national landmark. It is our city's first LGBTQ landmark. Throughout Greenwich Village, the East Village, and NoHo, you'll find scores of sites where revolutionaries who fought for religious freedom, women's suffrage, and equality for African Americans and the LGBTQ community lived and worked. Village Preservation works tirelessly to protect and preserve their history, maintaining the windows into our city's past so you and I will always remember the impact of our neighborhood's architecture, scale, and sense of place. like every little street has a magic little secret. And speaking of magic, I'd like to transport you now to the home of Karen Lashinsky on Hudson Street. And here we are. It's 632 Hudson. This started as two adjoining townhouses, the one on the right owned by Stephen Kane, the other for the family of Richard Towning. In 1881, Irish immigrant Hugh King purchased both townhouses and converted them into a general storefront and warehouse for his liquor importing and exporting business. The remnants of his store's original signage is still visible right above the first floor. And at the very top, he even installed a pediment on the cornice to capture his name and the year he purchased it. In 1992, our friend Karen Lashinsky and her mother would stumble across what remained of the two structures which had been ignored for some time. Through those windows and doors behind me is almost 200 years of history, brought to life through the adaptive reuse of this erstwhile sausage factory by our gracious hostess. I cannot wait to see what's on the other side of these doors. Karen. Oh, how lovely. Thank you so much. It's That's so nice really to nice. see you. It's very nice to see you as well. Welcome to 632 on Hudson. Oh, thank you. I have walked on Hudson many times and I've looked at this building and I've wondered what lies inside. So I'm so excited. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You're about to find out. <laughs> Like all good Village Preservation House Tour participants, I've brought my own booties. So, if you don't mind, I just need to hang up my hat and we can head up to the second floor. We start the afternoon by visiting Karen's apartment, a two-bedroom, two-bath home filled with natural light. It's immediately clear that Karen has a very special eye for collecting and style. I just liked, always liked creating 
stage sets. Like, I loved making dioramas as a kid. My father, who was a, a scientist, took me to the Museum of Natural History every week, and I loved those little vignettes behind the glass. And that's what I did here. I made all these vignettes. I was working as an actor with the Worcester Group. I got a real estate license to supplement my income and I was showing this house to a client and I fell in love with it. Surprises are hidden around every corner. Even this cabinet, which was originally installed in a passenger ship from the early 20th century, has a few secrets. While I sing happy birthday and tidy up, Karen has already ascended to the third floor where more friends and stories await. Up a few stairs, and 632 Hudson really begins to bloom as a three-story atrium welcomes us. Lauded over by a hand-painted mural of Putti. Karen's creativity paved the way for more surprises that lie ahead. This gorgeous stone fireplace, for instance, bought brand new and aged by Karen and her daughter to look as if it had been plucked from a French chateau. Underneath the salvaged trim of an old merry-go-round, a luxurious black marble bath and Far East theme adorns the first of many bedrooms throughout. The stones were here a couple of times. Once when the movie Shine a Light came out, and there was an article for the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, and they did a photo shoot here. Up a few more stairs, and we're nearly swallowed by a full kitchen. The original ceiling still intact, the walls filled with portraits and treasures carefully selected from online auction houses, dusty warehouses, and antique stores from all over the globe. My mother, who was a German Jew who was forced to leave in 1933 with all her family, always wanted me to have some kind of stability and solidity. And as a ballet dancer and actor, that wasn't very solid. And she wanted to help me find a way to have something that would remain. All the things I have around the house, I guess, are about my mother, myself, and my daughter. This is such a feast for the eyes. It's as if we've eaten a full seven course meal in only just a few minutes. I hope you've saved room because we haven't had dessert yet. The cherry on top of this enormous sundae features a shrine built out of a water tank, a rooftop greenery, and a spectacular view of downtown Manhattan. The summit of 632 Hudson is a Babylonian garden among steel giants. And the spirit animal that watches over it all is Maisie, Karen's adorable pup, who has been a staple at 632 Hudson for her whole life. You know, sitting up here, it's so serene and peaceful, you can forget all your troubles of the day and forget that you're in one of the busiest cities in the world. Although, there is a sweet sound in the air and I can't quite place where it's coming from. Can you hear that? I love secret rooms and secret doors. I had a book when I was a kid uh, called Tony's Wonderful Door and it was written by Howard Fast. It was about a little boy who lived in New York. He went through an alley, he opened a door, and he was taken back to New York when, with Native Americans living in this courtyard in the back that always uh, stayed with me. Even when I built the whole uh, venue, I wanted it to be you'd go in through an ordinary building that was ordinary from the outside, but then you'd open the door and just be Not to be outdone by the five stories above us, but the final secret, not behind any window or door, but a false wall, is the olive in the martini of our tour. A working speakeasy, 
complete with musical accompaniment, is the final stop on our tour where the 1920s and 30s comes alive in dimly lit fashion. This has truly been a most magical experience. I'd like to profoundly thank Karen Lashinsky for so graciously sharing her amazing home with us. Thank you for taking pride in your neighborhood. And thanks to you, Village Preservation can help ensure gems like this stay a part of the neighborhood. Now I, I just need to figure out a way to tuck into this cocktail. In the meantime, hope to see you around the neighborhood. Ciao.